Uh, as far as the design, we're after sort of strength and character. I, I talk all the time of getting you know, a passionate character uh, projected from the vehicle, from the design. And, and for that, it's just like lots of uh, discussions with, with my designers about how we're going to do that. The difficulties today making an SUV such as the, the new Compass is really the platform that we're giving, the, where we start from that. Uh, it's not always an ideal SUV style platform. A lot of what's going on are these crossovers and that kind of a thing. So we're starting with more of a car based platform and the struggle is really trying to get that to behave the way we want. And when I say the platform, I mean the underpinnings of the vehicle. We were able to affect this vehicle uh, early on. We got, we got a little bit wider track to it and a, and a, a better shoulder on the vehicle. We, we widened the platform that we were given. Uh, the powertrain is not really an issue because the, the hoods are high enough. It's not, a, it's not a problem. So a little bit of struggle up front, but really once we understood it, and we did this alongside of the Renegade back and forth, to do those two vehicles together actually helped out. We were able to affect the platform and get the, the character that we want through the, the sheet metal. Uh, body on frame has its place, uh, especially for, say we do that on our Wrangler, we do it on, on our large pickup trucks. Uh, for a severe duty kind of a thing, that, that, that has its place. And it makes complete sense uh, for, for lots and lots of reasons. Uh, Jeep Pioneer doing a unibody when we did the XJ back in 1994, the original Little Cherokee. Um, that, so unibody for us, it doesn't, it doesn't matter one way or the other. We, uh, the powertrain even is, is fairly simple for us. The engineers always seem to come through. They amaze me. They come through with some new technology for off-road off duty. Uh, for instance, the, the, the way this new compass is set up, the disconnecting feature throughout the, the transaxle or the power takeoff unit. Uh, even we, we're responsible more for the geometry to get the, the, the ground clearance, the height, uh, approach departure angles. But uh, as far as body on frame versus, versus unibody, it doesn't really matter so much for us. First off, I'm rarely after a lower stance on a Jeep. Right. Uh, I, more ground clearance, the better for me, up to a point. Uh, it's, you know, you've got to have, you've got to achieve equil equilibrium so the vehicle behaves right on road and off road. Uh, this Compass is not an extreme off road vehicle, but it certainly has off road chops more so, than, I think, than anything else in its class. Uh, the geometry part, uh, probably the most challenging piece is getting the, uh, the approach angle to, to live right with the aerodynamics of the vehicle. Aerodynamics, of course, always want us to go lower and lower with the fish. Off-road, we want to go up higher for approach angle. Um, those are often in conflict. We've, we've had several good solutions for that. Uh, on this vehicle, for instance, the air dam is very flexible. We've had other vehicles where the air dam is removed prior to going off-road, the, the Cherokee, for instance, or the, or the Grand Cherokee. So these are things we have to develop along the way or invent. Uh, but it's part of our DNA to be off-road, to be able to do uh, extreme measures off-road. And we've got to build it into everything we do. Honestly, is that a challenge? Yeah. Is it a worthy challenge? Yeah, I'll bring that on every time. I, it's, it's good for us because uh, it gives us something more to think about. I've actually been asked, would we consider doing something else? I'm like, why, why would I? I've, I've got such a great... Uh, front, front face to the vehicle. The face, you see certain manufacturers will change the face of their vehicle over and over. We take the seven slot grill, uh, which we established from day one, having the slotted grill, uh, and we'll, we'll play with it. For instance, on this vehicle, it's presented now in, in a big black broad band with these seven individual boxes. Before that, we were doing it a little bit differently where it was all chrome across there. Um, but that's that's easier to deal with or more interesting to deal with rather than having to reinvent the face of the car every time. For a long time, our vehicles, I think, were, were sort of a, uh, they were more utilitarian than they were premium. The, the Compass actually walks that line back and forth between 
entry level and premium. It's able to do both. But we've been erring on the, the more premium side on everything across the line. For instance, the, the Wrangler is even you know, getting a squishy dash. It's, it's just elevating the whole brand rather than just uh, uh, suffering at the bottom end. Uh, the materials in this vehicle are, are very nice, soft IP. The, the seat features a lot of uh, beautiful stitching, especially in the premium models, but even the door panels and every, everywhere you touch it uh, or come in contact with it, it's soft touch. Proportions are everything. Uh, they really are, and it's, it's good to pick up on that. Um, front drive packages usually have uh, very challenging proportions. You get a lot of front overhang or some imbalance somewhere. Uh, we've been very lucky that the platforms we've worked on have been, have been pretty good. Uh, the Renegade and again the, uh, the, the Compass here have got I think really good proportions. Um, there's the problems we've been able to, to, uh, to hide or to disguise somehow and, and uh, I'm not really complaining about that too much. Um, Ongoing, we're, we're in a period, uh, a point with Jeep, we're trying to elevate the whole brand a little bit more towards the premium side. That's been the push and I think you're starting to see the fruits of that.